So, uh, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for joining. Um, this is uh, implementers call number three for EIP 1559 and now, um, now, uh, also other proposals. Um, oh, we have more people kind of slowly rolling in. Um, yeah, so the goal of today, uh, as, as per the agenda, uh, was mainly to try and analyze the different proposals that uh, have been put forward. Um, so there was the original EIP 1559, uh, then Dan Finley from MetaMask put together uh, sort of counter or uh, composable proposal for it uh, called escalator fees. Um, and then Mika Zoltu, I hope I'm getting uh, his name right, um, also had another uh, proposal around typed transaction envelopes, uh, which both EAPs could use. Um, I think it would be valuable if we can get to a spot where uh, we, we have, you know, pretty broad alignment on, on what's the best way to move this forward uh, because then we can start answering some other questions around how do we actually test this, um, what's required, you know, for us to feel confident deploying this on, on the network. Um, yeah. Does that generally make sense to everyone? Yes. Cool. Um, Okay, so I mean, I, I can go through kind of the list of, of comments that people posted as a sort of conversation starter. Um, but yeah, there were, there were three main things that that, uh, that people, I, I don't think any of them are on this call, uh, voiced in terms of opinions with regards to if we should bundle or unbundle the proposal. Um, first, there was Mika's comment basically saying that uh, he's strongly against bundling the EAPs uh, because they both add value on their own. Um, and, and, and so we should just have them separate because of that. Um, then Barnaby uh, put together kind of a, a, pretty, long, uh, a pretty long explanation uh, saying that uh, either, uh, either we have to keep, uh, keep the current transaction model with the escalator rule for the fee, uh, and by current, I, I assume that he means, uh, I, I, yeah, I, I assume he, he means like what's on mainnet today. And then uh, the second option is you use 1559 and you use the escalator rule to calculate the, the premium. And then finally, uh, Derbit, which is kind of a, a research uh, blockchain uh, analysis blog put together a pretty uh, thorough analysis of the escalator proposal and, and how it works or doesn't work with 1559. Um, and their kind of takeaway after the, the, the analysis was uh, 1559 probably provides most of the value and the escalator can be done uh, outside the protocol. Uh, so maybe it makes sense to just start with 1559. Um, so I'm curious to get thoughts from just other folks on this call. Uh, yeah. Well, for the last point, uh... I kind of disagree with that. Uh, I think it's better to have uh, the escalator algorithm on the protocol layer because uh, if you delegate uh, this to a third party, uh, you will have to uh, resign the transaction. So you will have the, a background service on the wallet, for example, and to resubmit transaction. And uh, I think it's better to avoid uh, this signature process if we can have this in the protocol layer. So does anyone on the call think we should not bundle EIP 1559 with the escalator fees proposal? Uh -huh. um, uh, I'll say I'm neutral on that. Uh, for me, uh, it uh, depends also on uh, if we want to make the tra type transaction envelope a requirement of them, uh, because uh, if we don't, it will be hard to, let's say, implement it 1559 alone and after add the escalator uh, if we don't have the type transaction envelope. I think it will be better to have uh, the type transaction envelope before implementing uh, both EIP. 
so that we can even imagine a system where you have some uh, basically three transaction types uh, EIP 1559 alone, escalator alone, and the combination of both. But I guess it will be maybe bad because the user experience will be different for different types of transaction. But yeah, I will strongly advocate for having the type transaction enveloper requirement for both. Well, are you saying have the type transfers first and then do 1559 and or before either of them? Like uh, Basically on the same hard fork. But just uh, let, let's say, for example, pass uh, uh, the type transaction envelope to EFI and then make uh, uh, this uh, as a requirement for E1559 and uh, Escalator. Why do you say that they just joined hard fork? Sorry? Why are you saying that they should be on the same hard fork? Like, wouldn't it just make sense to do type transactions as soon as possible? And if the next hard fork they're both at it great if not i mean it's it's mainly uh, to avoid changing the user experience from uh, a hard fork to another because if we implement first if 1559 we will have some breaking change on wallet implementations etc et also on user experience and then if in the next hard fork we decide to add escalator we will again uh, have some breaking change on the user experience so i think it's pretty bad but yeah and that's with with without the envelope um, or in both cases i mean we could have a combination of both uh eip 1559 and escalator without uh, the type transaction envelope it will be just uh, harder on the on the pure implementation side but we can deal with that but uh for the breaking change on the user experience, uh, it does not depend on the transaction type on the loop, in my opinion. Um, Hasu just joined, who I think would probably have something to say about this if we caught him up to speed. Um, they're talking about bundling these two IP, EIPs, whether that should happen, um, and kind of the pros and cons against Escalator being in protocol or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hi. Uh, I don't have a strong opinion on whether they should be bundled or not. I think the Escalator in general is a good idea. I think we, have, we see that it's being adopted uh, on the client side, and it's, it's also something that users do manually already. So, um, that's that's one of the main points of our analysis that we published today that the, there are some arguments that the protocol should be as lean as possible in the base layer protocol so we should see if it's being adopted on the client side and then if it's very popular then we can internalize it that would be my approach but in in, in that case you accept to have two breaking change because even if it uh, already exists uh, uh, outside the protocol, uh, if we integrate it uh, after in the protocol, that will be a breaking change. So, yeah. Uh, um, in my, if I could have everything all line up right. I just for simplicity of less moving parts, I would prefer for 1559 to go in first and then say maybe in four months, we could even plan this advance in advance and work towards them of having like a four month window between deploying 1559 and then adding this clear algorithm. It's just, there's simplicity and having less moving parts when it first started because there still is some risk of things going wrong. And so having less things that could go wrong all at once seems nice. Uh, as far as breaking changes, I think it's valuable enough for the users of the network to like the reason we don't break changes is, is because of user experience and it, and it, and it hurts somewhat mo um, users expectations. But in the case that, users want it enough, then it makes sense to go forward with them. 
So you're saying if you ship 1559 as is, you change the transaction fee, that means every single wallet has to kind of readapt. And then if we then ship escalator, you know, call it four or six months later, you have that, that adaptation again, right? You're asking once more every single wallet or thing that sends a transaction to readapt. Um, I feel like that's like a lot. Like I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like that's, a lot of added complexity to the entire yeah. ecosystem that we can maybe manage better uh, by either saying, you know, 1559 as is, is complicated enough. We want to ship that and, and let's just do the escalator outside the protocol. Or if we really want the escalator in protocol, I, I think it makes more sense as a single, a single EAP, like a new EAP that's like a merge of the two in a way. Um, because then you you have this very complex change, but you only have it once, right? Yeah. So you're you're saying having fifteen fifty nine as is, and then having the escalator be done outside of the protocol, with the option of coming back later and doing it. I I don't have a strong opinion. Or something like either that. E either yeah. that or you you basically create a new EAP that's the escalator with a base fee or 1559 with an escalator tip, however you want to frame it. Um, but you just do it all in protocol from day one. Um, huh. Yeah. As far as for the, like the difference between the, the, escalate, the escalator change isn't really that big of a change if it was just on its own. As far yes, as it's true. UX yeah. and wallets. Yeah. So I, as, especially if we were to say we're rolling out in part in phase one and phase two. So while people are prepared and they know that they're, that these kind of changes are happening and, and they have to build the UI anyway for both. If we're going to do both, if we say, Hey, we're going to do one and then we're going to use some time to inform, to make sure that our decisions are correct on all of these, on all of these variables and and then deploy the escalator tip maybe it turns out that we don't even need that because of whatever ends up working um, um like yes it, it isn't but, like we're saying hey part one and then we're going to come around and say let's do everything again part two or or like completely separate change because we if say, we yeah, if we do need the escalator after, it will be confusing for user because uh, the the field they were using without will mean another thing. So it will be confusing for them because if we combine them, uh, it is the interpretation of each field is slightly different. So I think it can be confusing for user, and if it is in uh, such short period, it can be really hard because a lot of the work will be about uh, educating user, I guess. And, and also, if 1559 is already designed to be, uh, you know, there is two phases on 1559. So there is already a transition period to make the wallet integration smooth. Yeah. So, and uh, it seems to me that we will add complexity if we say, we have an EAP that makes the integration smooth with the transition period, but uh, four months after we will have again a breaking change uh, without the transition period again. So, yeah. Um, changing the minor tip to an escalator, I don't think is complex enough to warrant a transition period. No, but uh, it's more about yeah. uh, the wallet integration. Yeah, yeah the wallet integration. Yeah. If, yeah. if if it works outside of protocol, like let's say we do 1559 first and then encourage wallets to do the escalator, um, the es have the escalator tip outside of the uh, protocol level. Yeah, I see what you mean. We can leverage uh, UX, UI, but the most difficult part will be about uh, transaction signing because it totally changed how you sign transaction uh, with or without uh, 
I mean, if it is outside the protocol, basically it just simulates the escalator by resigning transaction with different gas prices. But it is not the same uh, that that uh, yeah, with the escalator uh, in the protocol, you sign the transaction only once. So you have to include the, uh, more fields in the transaction signing and how you uh, encode the transaction, etc. So yeah, it's. This is the main important change. We, it's true that that we can leverage the UX UI, but uh, not the signing. Yeah. One one thing I'd be curious to get other people on on the call's opinion is uh, in your piece, Hasu, you mentioned like the sort of privacy implications of the escalator fee, right? Because if you if you kind of put a transaction in the transaction pool and then resign it to the higher gas fee, like sure somebody might be able to track that, but it's not like part of the protocol forever or part of, sorry, the, the kind of history forever. Um, whereas if you have the escalator, basically every transaction signals, you know, this is the least and the max I'm willing to pay. Um, and that's going to be recorded as, as part of like those fields being added to the transaction. Um, does anyone, like what do people think about the privacy implications there? Do people think it's like a concern? Is that something that you can already kind of infer anyway on the network? Yeah, so I see two implications. The one is on user balances or user accounts. So accounts may be associated with a higher like uh, propensity to to spend or something like that. Um, but the um, oh, sorry, forgot my point. I think we already have this thing, maybe less, but because you cannot know uh, from where they started to, to bid, but you know the final price, so you can have some signals about, uh, about how important was the transaction for the user. So it, it disclosed some information, less than with the escalator in protocol, but uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. Yeah, I, I just uh, remember the second point. The second point is on um, whatever, if miners can use this information to come up with mm. any new strategies to maybe delay transactions. Mm. If they know, if they know um, deterministically that a transaction is willing to pay X amount in the future, if it isn't included now, that's information that miners don't have today. But I, I don't know if there's a way for them to exploit that. I don't know. You could certainly wait and hope that nobody else puts your puts their the transaction in. Like if everyone waited till the end, then everyone would have the maximum escalator fee, the maximum fee. Mm. So that that's actually kind of a good point of having. If it's outside of protocol level, then you remove that information from the miners, so they they don't know. Yeah, I mean, you would hope that there's um, a coordination problem amongst miners where they are like one of them is incentivized to break the kind of cartel formation and just include a transaction once it's profitable instead of delaying and delaying and delaying. Yes. Right. If yeah, blocks are generally full though, um, and most miners are following the strategy of waiting, then once I come along, even if I want to be honest, I'm still going to pick the ones that have been, been waited on. And so the, the strategy might still be dominant, even if you have like one honest person that wants to um, to break it. Just because breaking it would assume that they would pick up all the most valuable, but also pick up the ones that haven't reached the top escalator. But if the blocks are full, they don't necessarily have that option anyway. So does, does that suggest that we should think more seriously about how to do it outside the protocol there? Um, I'm not necessarily suggesting that. I'm just suggesting that um, in the extreme case, you might have, uh, you know, the honest player doesn't necessarily uh, break the strategy. 
Yeah, yeah. I was, and I, I'm also wondering more people on the call if that's kind of the direction that this is. I mean, my, intu my intuition is that it's not a big deal that you yeah. uh, that you leak this information to miners. So that it's, it's just an intuition. I have the same intuition. Yeah. So then, what are the the big deals? There is. You can still escalator your. If you wanted to not reveal information, you can still like put the min and max very tight, and then sign a new transaction rather than dealing with the uh, protocol escalator. Yeah, you can still use the the, the in protocol escalator strategically, right? Where you mm -hmm. only encode it for you encode a strategy for two blocks or three blocks, and then you right. Just, even if you're willing yeah. to go higher in yeah. more blocks. Yeah. Exactly. You, you strategically don't reveal your true preferences. Right. Yeah, my biggest, I think, big concern at this point is just I, I'm not that confident there's actually the time to do both separately. Like and, and that the UX uh, burden is worth it, right? Like I think 1559 like changing the way transactions are formatted is probably the most breaking change you can do um, on each one, at least, because literally everybody who sends a transaction needs to adapt. Um, I, I would strongly try and avoid doing that twice, especially given that like historically we have like a six to nine month delay between hard forks. Um, so that means that say, you know, say best case scenario, we ship whatever, just 1559 early next year, and there's another six months, it means you're still looking like at another year before the escalator goes live on the network. And right when everybody's kind of starting to get comfortable with 1559, you're basically breaking things again. Mm. Um, to me, I, I, I don't know, my intuition is that's like worse than either option of like never shipping escalator in protocol or just, you know, the extra complexity of bundling them together. Um, and I wish Dan Fidley was on this call because I feel he has the best perspective uh, from MetaMask on like, yeah, how much breakage is, is acceptable, but yeah. Yeah. Is there problems on, on from just like transaction inversion perspective of having, because we don't really have that capability built in. Or having or multiple transaction types, is there like implementation problems of separating them from that perspective? Well, I guess that one I can see is, do you want all your transaction types to burn the base fee, right? And if, if you do, which seems to be like a lot of where the community support for 1559 comes from, um, then if all your transaction are burning the base fee anyway, you're kind of back at this problem, right? Where they all have this pretty common, they all have this common component um, and you're kind of messing with like the other parameters So it seems like, I, I don't know, no one here has like a super strong opinion for or against bundling uh, the two. I have a strong opinion for actually. For bundling? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, does anyone have like a strong opinion against bundling them together? I would assume that barring more analysis, most people on this call would not particularly have a strong feeling unless bundling was going to significantly delay uh, deploying 1559. Um, you know, if there was additional complexity in implementing this in protocol and getting it tested and getting it released that was going to push everything back, say, six months um, or, you know, a, a single hard fork, uh, I would imagine a lot of people in this call would rather push out 1559 than bundle. But uh, I, don't have a, I don't have a good handle on the relative complexity of adding elevator in protocol versus just to me, it's easier to bundle them than uh, adding them later, especially if we don't have the type transaction envelope. 
my my assumption was based on the fact we accept to uh, have the tag transaction enveloped uh, as a requirement of EP fifteen fifty nine. Is it also possible to ask a question on fifteen fifty nine in this call? Sure. Oh, okay. So, what would be interesting to me is: Have you ever tried to simulate any twenty million gas blocks? Yes. The proposal suggests. Well, how do clients no. deal with uh, that? We decided to remove the the block limit riders and let the miners decide, as it is right now. And there will be a separate EIP to add riders if we think it will bring value. But uh, we decided to separate uh, if fifteen fifty nine from the riders. Oh, I mean, just in terms of stability, how? how ah, okay, okay, okay. With, okay. Yeah. No, with yeah. twenty million gas blocks. No, yeah. and and that was basically the next point on the agenda. But I think the hard part is, um, we basically want to agree to a spec of like what those blocks look like yeah. before we start those simulations. Um, but I think that would be, um, that would be the next step. Yeah. And maybe regarding the the vo block voting. Uh, the, the gas limit voting is is anyone seriously in favor of that at this point or would it be in favor of keeping of, of, gas of limit keeping voting it, or yeah, removing it of, of keeping it i feel like it's a known incentive incompatibility issue um, of having mm. miners decide the the gas limit so i'm just su surprised mm. that um, yeah. no, there are <laughs> There have been arguments made that we shouldn't bundle those two things together, right? Because like they're different proposals in some sense. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. my strong opinion as well. It's like if, you know, if we want to make the block gas limit something that's controlled by say hard forks, um, that's a separate EAP. But like 1559 shouldn't introduce that as a sort of side dependency uh, because it's a pretty critical change. And, and I would, I would strongly be for putting it as protocol layer, not as in minor control. So we're going to need a block gas limit implementer call. Um. <laughs> <laughs> we could do that, but uh, it's just it's, yeah. This that would take. I think that would take the discussion. But for answering Hasu's question, I would, I would. There's been some discussion about how to like procedurally manage some of the amount of changes that are happening. So we talk about it as removing riders and such, but I think we should seriously consider having the protocol, have it be at protocol level and not something that miners choose. Yeah. This is kind of a, yeah, side, side rabbit hole though. Uh, but yeah, I think I think if it's we do important. that, this should be a separate. Yeah, yeah, but it should be a separate EAP. Like I, I, I think and I'm fine with that. I'm, I agree yeah. that that should be the format. Yeah, I think we should also still execute on that. Okay, got it. So I guess re related to uh, back back to sorry bundling the two EAPs, would it make sense to try and you know put together a proof of concept implementation of the bundle and you know, see if it's if it's pretty straightforward, start testing with that. Um, because I feel like if if the main the main concerns are either, you know, uh, it'll slow things down, then we can't really know that in advance. Um, if there's a concern about maybe we want that at another level of the protocol than than the client, um, I just don't think we have the right people on this call to to to, to figure that out, um, but we can at least move forward with kind of the escalator tip, and and then uh, start doing stuff like modeling, you know, twenty million block sizes, uh, like doing some more kind of formal simulations and whatnot. Um, but at least we have like a single spec to go on, and then if there's any significant problems with that, we can kind of go back to fifteen fifty nine. Uh, sort of vanilla 1559 if you want um, because otherwise I just think it'll it'll kind of slow every conversation down to always be discussing do we do escalator do we do uh, do we do the original one 
um, and, and it won't get us to like, yeah, figuring out, can we handle 20 million gas blocks? Um, can wallets actually uh, provide, you know, a good interface for that and whatnot? Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think Danny is on, they're on point with that. The biggest concern would be around timeline changes. So if, if we could just agree that we, the ideal version is to have 1559 and the escalator trip, the question is how does that move forward if they happen separately or if they happen at the same time, then we can look at what, what actual effect on the timeline would be. Because if, if, if we had to wait an extra three months, three to six months to put the escalator tip in, then, we're, then we're, we've pushed 1559 back a bunch. And then, uh, how, how to say this clearly. So if we have a timeline of 1559 could happen sooner if it was without the escalator tip, and then three to six months later, we could have the escalator tip separately versus if we put them both in, but then they're both delayed three to four months, then yeah, we're, then we're, that, yeah, that, we're that worse doesn't really off. solve it. That we're, we're, we're end up being worse off. Yeah, I under the I don't really have a, an opinion on like timelines and so on, but under the condition that one five five nine is delayed, I would also oppose bundling them together if that's the result. I, I think yeah, I don't think it will be delayed uh, if we add escalator algorithm. Uh, we can start implementing a proof of concept to add escalator um, just to unlock people that will do the simulation. And then we can see if we want to do the tag transaction envelope, but that won't change the simulation basically. The, so for, for perhaps maybe for Besu, but like has anyone, going to be writing the get client implementation or the other client implementations for that I there's, can, a, there's a other i can ask uh, ayan from vulcanize who did the if it's in 59 implementation to see if he can work on the escalator i will he, ask him yeah right well he <clears throat> he wouldn't be able to unless we got funding for him to do uh, yeah yeah so there yeah. there isn't currently someone lined up to do that work for, on the get client so that would be something else we need to solve. Okay. Yeah, okay. that was yeah that was the other point. But I think you know, frankly, if nobody's gonna do the implementation work, there's kind of bigger problems of you know whether or not we bundle the tip, because there's still gonna be you know multiple months of getting this live, right? It's gonna take more than like yeah. a yeah a, a reference implementation on wherever the spec was at six months ago. Yeah, there's a different amount of work to polishing up the current 1559 that actually does things versus refactoring to put in the escalator too. Like that's, that's a significantly different amount of work. Okay. So I guess, can, can we decide that the ideal world is that we have both and it's about how do we get them in, yeah. in the best way? Yeah, I, I think I would rather up, go for that and then we can always trim down. Um, and, and we can just assume they're both going in and, and figure out the implementation details, you know, in the broadest general sense. Um, but at least be clear on the spec of like, okay, this is what it, it, it should look like. Um, and in so terms if, of, if yeah. we, if we say the ideal version is to bundle them, we, we have to well, decide the, how we. The, the ideal version would be to have both but it's unclear yeah. which, if they should be bundled or released in series. Ah, okay, okay. So, okay. so we can decide perhaps today that that is the, what we want to work towards. And the next question is what's ah, okay. the best way to okay, get yeah. to, to that, yeah. whether it's bundled or not bundled. That makes sense. With particular sensitivity to timeline, the effect on the timeline. Okay. By, by bundling these, um, are we inducing, the ability for more FUD by raising the complexity of this change. Uh, for example, you know, I know there's some people that are calling for uh, more in-depth technical and economic analysis in 1559 if we add uh, escalator and, you know, don't as well do this type of analysis. Um, and there's kind of open questions about leaking information and that kind of stuff. Are we shooting ourselves in the foot? A little bit, I would say definitely. <laughs> okay. I think I think that the challenge, though, is you know 
Dan's rationale for having the the escalator in the first place is like there's a bunch of problems that are like not solved by 1559. Um, so so yeah, I, and 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 I guess the big open question is also how you know how much of these could we solve outside of protocol, and if we could get you know eighty percent of the the fixes out the protocol and minimize the consensus change maybe that that's a better approach um and that comes back to uh like agreeing that we want to get to the world where they're both in but not yeah. sure how to best fit them yeah um so maybe there, in terms of Sorry, go ahead. Is there anybody strongly opposed to having that be like the, the vision that we talk about is having 1559 with the escalator as the ideal case? Yeah, and maybe one way we can flesh this out uh, in more detail is uh, I, I can schedule kind of a call with uh, Dan Finley and uh, Abdel and, and uh, maybe Ian if he's available so that we can actually go over, you know, what it would look like to bundle the two EAPs um, as well as um, as well as what could be done outside the protocol with the escalator um, and, and, and what the implementation impact of, of both those things would be. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Um, cool. So next thing on the agenda was um, basically testing. Uh, Nick Johnson was on the call, but he dropped off, I think. Uh, I know he's been kind of pushing for uh, having like a more rigorous uh, analysis of the 1559 spec. Um, Hasu, you mentioned, you know, trying to, to simulate 20 million uh, gas blocks and, and seeing what the network uh, looks like under those conditions. Um, Barnabé has been working on simulations. So I think it would be valuable to kind of, you know, get people's thoughts here on what we think, uh, like good enough, you know, testing scenario for 1559 and the escalator is. Um, by the way, just a, a kind of more general question on this one. Um, on the Ethereum test nets, um, do you know like how much activity there is, like how many transactions a day, how many people using it and so forth? Just looking now, Robston blocks have like, you know, five to 15 transactions each on average. Mm. And gas right, okay. use of like, I don't know, most blocks, most recent blocks seem to be MCA. either like less, well, either less than like a million or like, you know, Phil would probably like, I don't know, three, four million, which is probably like a couple of large contracts that people deploy. Mm -hmm. If you give right, me, right, okay, uh, well, that's, uh, if you give me specifics a, for the question, I, I can do some uh, SQL queries and get back to y'all. That's a, a bit unfortunate because I feel like the challenge with this mechanism is that like all the economic analysis in the world is honestly going to be less useful than like just seeing it run for a while and and uh, and if people getting getting a feel of how to interact with it and i guess we don't have the ability to use to like really properly use the test nets as an environment for that i mean we would but it's just that the gas uh, the base fee would kind of hover around one, uh, one way most of the time and then maybe occasionally it'll it'll start spiking up if uh, there's bursts of usage yeah on the last last call or the call before uh, thomas from nettermine said we should basically you know once we have a spec have a public test net and try to you know just market it pretty pretty heavily so that people kind of deploy stuff on it in the first few blocks um because that's kind of what you want you have like a burst of usage right on the on the network well kind of both what one way this might be a little bit extreme but the for robston is we could temporarily move the gas limit to like two million so you even if it's low usage 
you can squeeze. I was just looking at Gorley and there's like Interesting. even right. much less. Or the, th the, the thing you could do is and keep the gas and limit at 10 million, but keep the target at one or two million. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a better way. Hmm. And how the, the, the other challenge with Robston is um, obviously applications kind of depend on it. And we'd be putting in a sort of, uh, you know, half ready 1559. Um, what are people's thoughts on that? This may be the wrong call. Maybe Al Cordev's a better place for that. But yeah, what are people's thoughts on like breaking Robston early versus, you know, using a new test net, uh, the challenge there being getting people to actually use it? Which one uh, is Reddit using? Yeah, let's not do that one. <laughs> I mean, I, ultimately, wouldn't we have to do both? Like, first start yeah. off with a dedicated test net, and then, like, any hard fork goes on Robston before main it. And, and in any way, though, in this case, we could do it on Robston, like, six weeks before instead of three or whatever. So that there's yeah, more sure. time for it. Yeah. But if we do an artificially low target on the gas limit, um, it might actually affect right, the I see. usage there. Yeah, and, yeah, and I can fair. imagine where, like, before we're ready to deploy 1559 in, like, a proper hard fork, we want to get some network usage data um, because, like you said, it's probably what will inform the best when it breaks, right? Um, so I was thinking of, like, you know, we did this ephemeral test net for Berlin. Could we have another one easily for 1559? Um, and then the challenge is how do you get, like, a lot of usage on it? Is there a way we can just like write transactions, you know, like a sort of bot that sends tons of transactions to it? The the little bit of complexity I have, uh, as far as looking at it in comparison to YOLO is that part of the equation is looking at how miners react to it. So having it be a mineable test net, like is that a make or break for is is it necessary for the pre test net to be doing this be mined proof of work? I think it might be just because of the implementation, right, Abdel? Like we said, fifteen fifty nine won't like will be like a proof of work thing. Is that right? Um. I I don't think it needs to be. No, no, no. It, it could work with a proof of authority network. Yeah. That'd certainly be easier to do. And then, then a lot of the stuff you're talking about of throwing transactions and stuff is, is very much possible. So we basically, yeah, want like a clique test net. Um, yeah, uh, probably with more than one validator just to make sure it actually works on and bigger than one. Um, and we can fake volume on that. Yeah, can we reasonably write scripts to fake volume, you know, in, in, a, in a meaningful way? I feel like you should be able, like especially if you have like Genesis accounts with huge amounts of ether, right? Like they can just, that what we might not be able to do is or, or might be more complicated to do is just like complex smart contract calls. So you're not mimicking that. But if we just want to steal blocks, I don't see why you couldn't automate that pretty easily. We yeah, you can also vary the agent's activity to kind of induce spikes and, and troughs. Yeah, this is what I was going to say. Uh, Barnaby is working on uh, implementing some agent-based simulation. And uh, I don't know the status, but he was pretty advanced last time I, I talked with him. So. The basic question, but why couldn't you simulate 20 million blocks, 20 million gas blocks on Tesla? That, that is, that should be done separately. Or that, that is that we, so the, the, there's two questions to answer. One is, is, the, is 20 million blocks safe for the network? Ah, okay. And then the other one is, does 1559 actually sort of work as we want it to in practice? So the, gotcha. the one, yeah. But I, I, I think we still haven't figured out the best way to test that, but, a, but it got like a thick net that all it does is just pump out big blocks and then see if how, that, how that works. 
is something we should talk about. Okay, well, um, I'm going to have to head off now, by the way. But... Thanks for coming. Yep. So, yeah, and I think, yeah, in terms of blocks, so there's, yeah, there's a few things. It's like, can the network handle 20 million gas blocks without crashing? Um, and then the other piece is also once you have the transition uh, from regular transaction to 1559 style transactions, um, you're basically cutting the block, uh, like the, the, the block limits of, of, like based on the type of transactions. Um, so would you stop, would you make it impossible for, you know, large contracts to be deployed um, because the block is like, say, 50-50 between normal transactions and 1559 transactions? And in, intuitively, I don't think so. We, like, can, we can reduce the transition period. Uh, and we can even start with uh, directly phase two, maybe. But uh, I mean, is there any value to test the phase one where both legacy and new transactions are accepted? Yes, because wallets need to upgrade, right? Yeah, yeah, but for uh, f for what we want to test. Oh, for what we want to yeah, test. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. In production, obviously, there is value. Yeah, yeah. just for what yeah, yeah. we want to test. Maybe not initially. But and, and I think on on mainnet, so say you, you're effectively doubling the block gas limit, right? Um, so if I wanted to deploy a 10 million gas contract, um, you would always be able to do it because of the slack, right? So if it starts and it's like mostly old transactions and some 1559, then you deploy it using an old transaction. And then once it tips to more than 50% of 1559 style transactions, then you can deploy your 10 million gas contract using a 1559 size transaction, but you'll just fill up the block, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so just to kind of summarize the, the testnet stuff, um, we need, it, it probably makes sense to start with a new testnet that we can at least uh, run like a clique version of 1559 on and have large blocks and see this, you know, does this actually work and crash before we do anything else? As is or if 1559 alone? Would that be quicker? Yes, because uh, we have already the implementation, but uh, is so it maybe, what we want? Yeah. Maybe have you, try, we have you tried uh, connecting with the get implementation? Like, yeah, yeah, it works. Yeah, yeah, it works. Yeah. So then we could do that this week, next week. Yeah, exactly. We can set up like a YOLO v2 okay. or whatever, 1559 YOLO. Yeah, we, we and, can do that. Mm. What we won't be probably able to do within a week is then fill it with like huge transactions and, and whatnot, but we can just restart the test net. Uh, mm. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and one thing, I guess this is maybe not on this call, but yeah, how feasible is it to start an ephemeral test net? Like I'm not super familiar with how the get team did it, but is this something that you need, you know, Peter from Geth to actually like work with you on, or is it all open source and we can just do it ourselves? Is it the puppet thing you are talking about, or I I, yeah, I don't know. It would yeah. it would be puppet and click basically. Yeah. So maybe yeah, like James. Adel, me, and Ian can look into that and, and getting that up and running. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, does that make sense? Yeah. In the next couple of weeks? Yep. Um, and then, yeah, and then once we have that running, I think we'll, we'll figure out enough about how, how the EAP works to inform kind of future testing. But the other, the other question is, 
I guess Nick Johnson's question of like just more formal analysis, but if he's not here, uh, maybe we can chat with him offline about that. Um, if we are concerned by delay, to me it is uh, it is this is the kind of thing that could delay. Uh, well, it's a different thing, right? Like because it's like you're you want to make sure the the thing is properly tested before you move it to mainnet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. And to do that, you have to have like a final or finalish implementation. Um, Sorry, James, you were going to say something? Oh, no, it must have been the birds. Okay, so the last bit um, on the agenda was uh, funding. Um, or, or sorry, I guess uh, before that, there was uh, the type transaction. I feel like we've kind of touched on it in a bunch of different ways, but we didn't discuss it directly. Did anyone have any more comments on that? Can we can we see if we want to pass it as uh, EFI in the next uh, all core dev maybe? You can. It's not typical that a, an EIP is accepted into EFI the same core dev call that it's brought up. Okay. But it's ah, okay. definitely something that could be. It has been never brought up. It has never I'm, been I'm presented. Kinda, uh, not no. I'm not okay. aware of. Okay. 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 And then the, I'm curious from others here is, is making that a requirement for like to have 1559 is to have this kind of transaction thing. Is that a general consensus we have or people feel strongly about in either direction? I haven't followed it enough to know. Yeah, me neither. Um... Abdel, are you familiar enough with it to like talk about it on all core devs this Friday? The type transaction envelope itself? Yeah. Um, I was I also don't... planning to go to the all core devs and talk about it if you don't want to. Yeah, feel free to do that. Yeah. Yeah, that would be great, Matt, if you can just bring it up there. And, and I think based on the reaction of you know, the core devs call, we can see, we, we can get a feel for like how likely or unlikely it is to be kind of a, something that will delay uh, 1559. Yes. Okay. Is there a timeline for when you think 1559 is going to be included in a hard fork yet? I'm not really familiar with it. My hope, uh, I'm touching wood as I say this, is I'd like to get it for the next fork after Berlin. Um, okay. I, and I don't know when that will be uh, in terms of time, but I just think in terms of like roadmap, um, it probably makes sense. And, and one, it, feel, it feels like it's kind of getting ready and to that point. And then two, I think a lot of this stateless Ethereum stuff is going to start to become kind of, you know, ready to ship after that. Um, and and if, if 1559 is being developed at the same time as all the stateless stuff is being developed, I think they might, it, you'll have like these two things that might like interact that are both in development. And that's, that just means yeah. it's really hard to, to move them forward. So I, yeah, anyway, short, long story short, I'd like it to be the next upgrade after Berlin, but I'm not sure when that lands. Okay, I'll, I'll present 2718 on Friday and we'll get a temperature for it. And if things are good, then we can talk more about what the actual attack plan is regarding 1559. Sounds good. Um, anything else on the type transactions? Okay, uh, last uh, item on the agenda was the community funding bit. Um, I know James, you mentioned this uh, already on the call. Uh, you mentioned this to me before, like the idea of maybe having like a Gitcoin grant or something like that. But yeah, do you wanna give a bit of your, your thoughts on this? Yeah, I've, um, Ian's been doing a great, a lot of, I did a lot of great work for the Geth client and continuing to maintain it. I think it would be, uh, a Gitcoin grant would be a good opportunity to one fund some of these little things that can that we're looking to happen 
like a lot of the little stuff and perhaps have some bounties you know, not it doesn't really need to be a lot of funding but it would be it would help move things along quicker if we could if we could resolve some of these smaller stuff separately and then it would also be a good opportunity for the community to signal their support of 1559 because like a one die donation is a skin in the game way of saying yes I really want it and have having that that signal I think would help a lot for the core dev side because they they spend a lot of time on the protocol level basically keeping the network alive and that takes a lot of their time and attention and brain cells so clear ways for the community to tell the core devs how strongly they feel about something I think would be beneficial for their reception on swallowing the complexity of the change. Does I'm, anyone, op I'm open to other yeah. ways, but that, that's just, has been my thought about it. Yeah. I like the idea of like the community signal from Gitcoin. Does any, do you know when the next like CLR, CLR round is? I believe the current one's still going. Okay. So we could, kind of uh, put something together really quick and uh, have it there. And then the, the obvious challenge also with that is like, how do you kind of allocate the funds? Um, yep. Yeah, the people have thoughts on that. Um, Does anyone other than me have thoughts about that? or preferences? So one like preference that I have that I'm not sure how realistic it is, but it's like you, you ideally don't want people to vote to pay themselves, right? Um, but given like how small, you know, a number of people there are and, um, and uh, yeah, it, it seems like maybe in practice it, it actually won't work. Um, yeah. Uh, well, we could, uh, that could be a requirement that the people who are or who administer the funds aren't ones to receive any of them. Yeah, uh, I, like I mean, it, I, like it, like in my case, I'm I'm I my work is funded, so I yeah I, I don't I I could fulfill that. Yeah, I, I there, think there for us at Pegasus too. too. Like, I mean, you know, we're all kind of getting paid as part of our day jobs to do this. Um, so we, we don't require any additional kind of funding for, for it. Um, yeah, I, I think if, you know, the two criteria is like, if you're roughly affiliated with 1559 and you don't want to be a recipient of the funds, then we could just have like a majority vote and we can post in the discord Slack to see who, uh, the discord channel to see who, who wants to be that. And basically, by by asking to be on the sort of you know voting list, you're you're renouncing the funds you could potentially get, right? Yeah. Okay. Does anyone disagree with that approach? Um. Cool. Um. How do we how do we get the bounty up as soon as possible then? Um, and, and share it to the community. I can talk with Bitcoin. Yeah. I, I, you can make the, you can make it today. Like you could make okay. the, the, the thing, it, the, getting it into the CLR is a conversation with, uh, Gitcoin grants. Oh, okay. Got it. Um, but you can, you can deploy the grant outside of CLR, but getting it included in CLR is a matter of just having a conversation with them. As okay. far as the governance of the funds and things like that, talking with a, a as long as the, we aren't getting a lot and we have transparency about where they're all going. Yeah. I, um, I can, I can make, yeah, I can take a stab tomorrow at putting together the Gitcoin grant, uh, share it, you know, share a draft of it in the channel. And we can maybe, and I'll ask today for some people who might want to be like early uh, fund administrators. Yeah, I'm uh, sure we could get I, we we could get Hudson to do it. I could ask him. Yeah, yeah. So like Hudson, yourself, some others who are 
involved in 1559 or, yeah. or ha have like a lot of domain knowledge. One yeah. thing that's been a struggle with finding funding is a lot of, there isn't a lot of people who have a lot of understanding about like lower level understanding about all the things that are going on. So it it's, takes yeah. a lot of conversations to say, oh yeah, we, we do need this little thing because then I'm re-explaining over and over and trying to just has, has a lot more friction than I anticipated. Yeah, I, that was, I can imagine. So if I may, like, uh, uh, I, I can think, I can think that cat hurdles can also help in setting up this thing, uh, this Gitcoin uh, CLR thing. And uh, as far as I know, uh, as long as it is under the CLR, like I, I believe for this term, it is till 4th of July. So we are eligible. If, if we apply before that, we are eligible for getting CLR. And yeah, we would be happy to coordinate the funding. Like we did it previously for uh, proper. So yeah, we can do it for this. And uh, whosoever is there, you know, uh, distribution should be completely your, uh, I mean, the group's uh, decision. So yeah, we would be happy to help in coordination part. Sure, that sounds good. Yeah, so I'll try to get a, a, a V1 of the grant uh, ready tomorrow. I'll share it in the Cat Herders chat and in the, in the 1559 chat for people to give feedback. And uh, yeah, we can, uh, we, we can take it from there. Uh, the, uh, the other thing I think we should add to it is as 1559 closes, we should donate any extra funds to matching the matching grants system so if there's anything yeah that yeah, over. Left over that it will yeah. just go back in okay i like that um okay uh was there anything else that anyone wanted to chat about Okay. Well, thanks a lot, everybody. Um, uh, uh, oh. Let's go over like the things to follow up on. Okay. Okay. Like, Good uh, point. A call, a call with me, you, and Dan, and some others okay. about implementation. What were what were the ones? Okay. Yeah. So I guess starting from 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 the beginning, basically on the there's three things, right? There's bundling, testing, and funding. Um, so for how we bundle things, um, I'll set up a call uh, with Dan Finley. Ian, Abdel, uh, James, if you want to be there as well, great to see basically how we can bundle them and how much of Escalator we can do outside of the protocol um, and, and come up with a proposal for that. Um, then uh, with regards to testing, we, we should set up another call or uh, anyways, can have this async, but just setting up an ephemeral test net that runs clique, which we can uh, start start feeding 20 million blocks for. Um, for for EIP 2718, Matt, you're going to bring it up on our core dev. We can kind of get a feel for for uh, for for how other people feel about the there. And then for the Gitcoin grant, uh, I'll set one up tomorrow and I'll share it with, uh, with folks on this call and in the, the chat rooms uh, to get feedback on it. Uh, another one is evaluating the time, the timeline effect, the effect on the timeline of if we move forward 1559 yeah. first. Yeah, so and I guess that would, yeah. On. It goes, yeah. it goes, it's a, it could be a separate call or part of the same one, but it's something to follow yeah. up on. Yeah. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Anything else? Okay. Well, thanks a lot, everybody. Thanks. thanks. Yeah. See you. Thank Bye. You. Here's all. Thank you.